Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's Matt McNeil. Uh, just figured I would pop in and say thanks for uh, to everybody for the positive response on my Lost Boys Michael, which has uh, um, been quite the journey for me. Uh, it's probably the most ambitious thing that I've ever um, sculpted, only as a result of the fact that it is just a basic human likeness, which I found to be far more complicated, in my opinion, than doing uh, like monster stuff, only because with the monster stuff, you can hide anatomy and you can make stuff up and, you know, texture and wrinkles. But when it comes to doing something that is uh, a recognizable um, person, uh, it becomes pretty, pretty difficult. But the, the thing that I wanted to sort of make a video about here is um, I actually set a specific painting challenge for myself today when I painted this guy. Um, generally, you know, I have airbrushes and stuff like that, and I'm doing my best to uh, reorient myself with, uh, with the uh, equipment. But um, I decided that I was going to try to paint this guy 100% without a paper or an airbrush. Um, why? Well, because um, unlike a monster, uh, we look at human faces every single day. And paint, uh, paint brushes or, or airbrushes actually uh, offer you um, really nice, even, smooth uh, gradients. Airbrushing has a look, and uh, it's a great look, but in regard to this particular character, um, which is just a face, I decided to look back in regard to. Um, things that I've heard in the past about about painting and one of the most interesting things that I sort of took to heart was there's no such thing as a black shadow and uh, there's darkness but if something in a sculpture a three-dimensional sculpture um, is gonna have a shadow that's gonna be black it's not and shouldn't be as a result of something that's been painted that way now Obviously, we're faking an interior of a mouth, and, and so we've got to cheat there. But in regard to the anatomy of the face and the painting of this guy, I decided that maybe what I would do is allow the shapes, the forms, to create those, uh, those highlights and those dark areas. Not that I'm not going to highlight a little bit, but I uh, also did not want to um, specifically put black in my airbrush and then I decided maybe I wouldn't use an airbrush at all so I guess the big question is then how do you get from this to something like this without an airbrush um, and I'm not completely done with this guy but uh, I figured I would just do a quick video and and talk about um, skin and how skin works so obviously the anatomy of the face is going to create shadows right um, but uh, I think that a lot of people, when they paint a mask, they base it out and then they paint some shadows and they, they call it a day. Um, with this guy, I actually approach the shading quite a bit different and, uh, differently. And what I did was I decided rather than shading traditionally, I was going to take the speckle approach to literally the entire mask. Um, I, I found a really interesting image online that was talking about zones of the face and how the face is colored. And the top quadrant of the head is generally yellowish. The center quadrant of the face is generally ruddy or has a, a, a red tone. And then the bottom of the face is either a green or a blue tone. Now, it's very, very subtle, but that's the way that the human face is colored. So I set out today with uh, a paintbrush to speckle with. Um, it actually not this one, but uh, but just to sort of give you an idea, I set out with, a, with 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 those colors in mind. So I based out the guy just like this, and then I mixed up um, a red color, actually this color right here, and made it very very thin, like super super crazy thin. Right, got my br brush. In there now you don't want it to be too wet because if it's too wet um, you're gonna end up with giant blobs of color on your uh, your mask so 
I got the, the end of the, the brush wet. I got a paper towel. And then I came over here and very, very lightly, all over the mask, everywhere, I did red. Now I said that the center of the face was predominantly red, but that doesn't mean that there's not red everywhere, right? So I went all around this guy, like all the way around, 100% all the way around. Forgive the hair, this is still a wig and I haven't trimmed it up. Um, I went all the way around, did the whole face. But then I came back and I concentrated here, particularly around the edges of the nose, these folds here, the nasolabial folds. Uh, and then I came back in here where shadows are made, right? And I came in and I gave those a little bit of red. And uh, it was really interesting to see this color, which is a very sort of pale uh, flesh tone, start to warm up. And that's exactly what I wanted based on the reference photos that I'd been looking at. So then after I did that, my red pass, I said, okay, fine. Well, now we're going to start from top to bottom. And uh, the second color that I wanted to use was going to be a yellow. So I love, 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 love uh, bronze yellow, which is uh, this color right here. Uh, this got a little red mixed in it. But actually, here it is, bronze yellow, right there. Sorry about my fingernails. <laughs> I've been painting, can you tell? Um, but I, I, I wanted to use uh, some bronze yellow. Uh, and I mixed it a little bit in with my very, 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 very thinned out red, which gave me something kind of in this area, right? A little tone in there uh, over here. I went back and cleaned my brush off, went back in with this. And then I went over this area up here. And again, when you're doing it, you know, we actually you want to hold it like this because believe it or not, the flex come out that way. But you can orient it because when you, when you watch, when you do it, you'll see it'll go creak and it'll be like a line. And you'll start to see that you can actually control where your speckling goes. So I came in here and very specifically hit here, uh, here, here, here. And so I was using not only my speckling to give me an overall breakup of the skin tones, but I was also using it to give me these sort of shadows, right? Because red and orange... Uh, kind of make an, uh, uh, or red and yellow kind of make an orangey brown, which is pretty much uh, the direction I wanted to go in if you look at the reference photos of Michael from the movie. So I came in here and I started doing those guys, right? And I covered very, not heavily, but more heavily up top. And then I went through and I speckled the whole thing with the same yellows. If you look in here, you'll start to see some yellows in there, right? So then I went and speckled the whole thing down with that, made sure that it was heavier and yellows at the top. So then the final thing that I did was we needed to do Michael's beard, but also we needed to uh, pay uh, attention to that sort of like greenish blue area. So what I did then was I took a little bit of blue, a little bit of black, and a little bit of my yellow, mixed it all up with some uh, very, 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 very thin water. Um, came back with my brush here. And very, very carefully, because I wanted to get very, very specifically in those stubble areas. Uh, and a stubble usually grows down over here and then here and then comes up and around. And if you look at the reference picture of Michael that uh, I used for this, you'll see specifically um, uh, the pattern of his five o'clock shadow. It's very, very specific in this, this image. Uh, or in that image. So anyway, I came through here. Maybe I need to come back with a little bit more here now. Um, but what's nice about beard stubble is it also gives us a very natural um, sallow look to the uh, the cheeks, which is really cool. The other thing to remember is on a dude, uh, we grow hair on our necks. So there's like, sort of like a V pattern. It's a little thinner in the center here, but it comes down and like that. So then I came through and I speckled the whole thing that way. And then uh, after that, Forget the eyes, these are not the proper eyes. These are evil Ed eyes, but you get the point. Um, I came back through in here and I gave extra red, extra yellow, and then definitely extra uh, blue-black um, in this area here. Now, I'm not done with the eye area specifically because I'm waiting for uh, custom eyes to be delivered. And once those are here and in, I'll come back with a brush and I'll very specifically uh, paint 
around the eyelids. There's kind of no use to doing it now because if I do it now, it'll just get rubbed off. Um, but then I'll come in and I'll do uh, a little bit of liner here. I'm thinking maybe even uh, doing some um, eyelashes for this guy. I haven't decided that for sure yet. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, there, there you go. That's, uh, uh, that's how I approached painting this guy today because uh, I specifically did not want to use an airbrush on him. And um, to be honest, I, I think this may be um, something that I uh, embrace and explore more in the future. Uh, again, nothing that I, not that I have anything against airbrushing. Uh, I think airbrushing can be awesome um, and is awesome if you're really, really good at it. But uh, I think that for specifically a human face that is supposed to look as natural as possible, I think that maybe uh, airbrushing is a little bit, in my opinion, um, on the, the processed looking side of things, just because it's almost too perfect. And faces are blotchy and they're ruddy and they're red and they're yellow and they're blue and they're all kinds of crazy different colors. So anyway, uh, that's how I approach this guy today. Um, I'm still working on him, uh, work in progress. These teeth have not been addressed or painted at all. This literally is just a, a wig that I've plopped on his head, but it's a pretty doggone good wig, right? And then I, I got really excited and decided I had to put uh, Michael's earring in, uh, and I need to do some 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 touch-up stuff in the ears. And Anyway, but you get the idea. I just wanted to talk about skin tones and how I started here and here and here and here <laughs> and ended up here uh, after, uh, you know, uh, about a, a day's worth of, uh, or maybe half a day's worth of painting. So anyway, hopefully that helps somebody out there. Uh, don't, don't be afraid to speckle stuff, uh, because I'm going to tell you, it's a really, really great tool in regard to creating skin tones. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's something that I think that a lot of people overlook in painting, they feel like that they paint down, a, put down a skin tone and they paint a few shadows and do a little lip color and maybe a little something around their eyes and hey, I'm done. And the reality is if they would just take the time to speckle several layers of breakup color on uh, their, their, their mask in regard to skin, stick, skin tones, they would uh, end up being super, super happy with the results because... Uh, uh, like I say, this experiment for me has uh, has paid off. I'm I'm uh, really uh, really digging the look of of all of this. So anyway, thanks for uh, letting me ramble and uh, and checking in. But uh, again, hopefully this helps somebody. All right, hope everybody has a good night. Bye.